So let's talk about what's forbidden. Now, I've been invited to speak at a conference on forbidden fruit, that's the theme. And um, it's got little devil horns kind of coming up in my head, you know, brought out the, the naughty side of me. Uh, it also got me thinking. So um, I think what I do anyway is helping people reintegrate what's forbidden. We need to look at history a little bit to see what has been repressed, denied, and um, is now causing problems today as a result of that. One of the mainstream traditions that's gone through the Western world is Christianity, and many other monotheistic religions follow the same pattern of having a large element which is body denying, having a large element which is body hating. It's not necessarily part of the religion per se, but it seems to have become attached to it. Now this is problematic because our bodies are the home of our emotions, how much of our values, spirituality, who we are as leaders and in the world I work with as coaches as well. So in a way, the whole of the body is forbidden fruit, particularly sex, and we still see this in the coaching world, which has inherited from therapy a fear of sex. So um, a lot of early therapists are very unethical and slept with a lot of their students, and this meant that sex became even more of a taboo, if you think of the sort of Victorian therapists. Um, for me, this is a problem, as this is where a lot of our energy comes from. You know, Of course, ethically, you're not sleeping with clients or anything like that, uh, however, being in touch with your own sexuality is really and really important for coaches and for leaders as that's, you know, that's where it all comes from. This is our basic animal evolutionary nature. Adding to the repression of the major religions who were kind of repressing the pagan traditions, um, we had then industrialization, which really again tried to turn people into machine, to cogs, uh, and later on into consumers. So this has repressed some really strange things like um, our fundamental nature to play, yeah, to have non-goal directed activity just to explore and learn and connect. Um, that's really been pushed aside and is a big part of leadership and coaching. Equally, sometimes just rest is taboo. Yeah? <laughs> to have a day off, to, and not for the sake of work, but just because it's a beautiful thing in itself. To, to rest has become a forbidden fruit, which is absolutely bonkers. So because of these trends, we're actually denying our, our real uh, huge part of ourselves, the body, emotions. Um, spirituality is now pushed out of the workplace. It's not okay not only to be emotional at work, particularly in Britain, and many European countries actually, but to say anything spiritual, that gets pushed out, which leads to business becoming very cruel, all kinds of ethical problems. Um, you know, it's like, oh, I'm a nice guy, but at work I'm not. We've somehow repressed and pushed out in a work context our very ethics, what we care about, which is completely insane. Okay, so that's the kind of mainstream world of business and work, repressing body, emotion, spirituality, cool parts of being human, and then it's kind of coming out sideways in weird ways, and also just dampening down the energy we have to, to live. The coaching world, which is where I spend a lot of time teaching, um, represses different things. So the coaching world is often already in reaction to this mainstream tradition, so it may actually repress things like rationality and logic. It may, as a result, descend into kind of new age um, uh, superstition. Yeah? So rather than taking rationality and moving above it, it actually drops down to something pre-rational. As I mentioned, sex is still repressed in the coaching and training world. Another big one, humour. So a lot of the kind of personal development um, uh, coaching traditions come from the United States. And um, they tend to have a very different sense of humour from the UK. And I would say it's less acceptable there. So for, for a British person, humour is a big part of who I am. Uh, same for my Irish family, other, other European countries. And um, you know, this is actively repressed, I would say, in, in many coaching and personal development schools. Also, the coaching world can get a bit kind of wishy-washy because in moving away from kind of hyper-rationalism and a kind of overly pushing kind of yang dynamic, it can get overly yin and become um, emphasising the listening side of coaching, which is important, but really forgetting about fierceness and challenge and that more yang side. In the coaching world, having a set of balls can be forbidden fruit. Obviously there's cultural factors here, like what emotions are repressed in different cultures. For the English it might be joy, in other places I've lived it's for example sadness, um, different forbidden fruit emotionally in different places. I guess I'll finish with maybe uh, one of the biggest forbidden fruits of our time, which is death. So paradoxically, the ability to face death, to acknowledge death, something which is really pushed aside in the sort of positive thinking world and just general culture, um, this idea that we, you know, we suffer and we're all going to die, uh, this paradoxically reduces our contact with life and our appreciation for life and our presence in the present moment. So I'd like to end with that as a really important one. So while, of course, if we're looking at sex and death and all these topics, 
uh, strong ethics are needed, strong boundaries and containment are needed. For me, it's really important to reown this forbidden fruit um, to make us juicier, more whole and better at what we do.